Hi, everybody, and Happy New Year. Uh, this is Cynthia Walker. I'm coming to you from the Brick Store Museum here in downtown Kennebunk, right across the street from the First Parish Universalist Church that is about to perform their blueberry ball drop uh, at 9 p.m. and, of course, at midnight to celebrate 2021. Um, in the middle of that, the Brickstore Museum is going to um, dive into our archives to see what was happening on historic December 31st of the past uh, right here in Kennebunk. So what that means is you are going to go on a journey with me through our 35,000 piece archive. <laughs> Not that much really, but um, search through our newspaper collection our journal collection, I have an example of that here. This is an old journal that we have in our, our collection. This is from 1868, but I have a whole pile over here. Uh, I have some photos. I have some digitized newspapers that we are going to um, get to know and use a Google random number generator to pick different years in Kenny Bunk's history um, from about 1800 to 1960 to see what was happening here in town right at the turn of each year or at the closeout of each year. Um, one of the reasons why uh, New Year's Eve Kennebunk, which is a partnership between the First Parish Church, the Brickstore Museum, and the town of Kennebunk, one of the reasons why we wanted to do um, a history throwback is because of that famous song that we often sing. I don't know if you've sang it already tonight, but Old Lang Syne is a um, 18th century uh, Scottish poem, basically, uh, <laughs> that has now become kind of a theme song to New Year's Eve. And if any of you are wondering why uh, it is likened to New Year's, one of the first lyrics of that song is, um, for old acquaintance be forgot and never thought upon, was the original um, poem uh, that started it all. And what it was asking was, is it right that things be forgotten and not looked back on? And of course, that's what we always ask here at the museum <laughs> where our mission is to ignite personal co connections to local history and art, of course. So we have a whole archive here at the museum that we're just gonna go take an adventure through for a couple of minutes as we wait for the wild blueberry ball drop off of the steeple of the Unitarian Church. Again, you're gonna be able to see those videos. 9 p.m. is the early bird ball drop. And then of course at midnight, we'll be counting down with the blueberry and with the Unitarian Church folks um, at midnight to welcome in 2021. So tune in for that right here on this Facebook page, as well as this YouTube channel, whatever you are watching it on, you are welcome to uh, return, jump back in. We'll be have, having videos playing all evening. So I hope that you enjoy. Okay, and now we are back. I changed seats um, because right out the window that I'm sitting in front of, we can see uh, the Unitarian Church and we're getting all ready for the blueberry ball drop. Um, but I just wanted to say, I also invited somebody to help me uh, with this wonderful history lesson. Um, this is my sister tuning in all the way from the West Coast. She's in California. But since uh, New Year's is the time to spend with family anyway, she's volunteered for the night. Um, and I've given the rest of the staff the uh, evening off. <laughs> so this is Catherine, my sister. She is going to be the uh, magical um, year reader. So she's using uh, basically what is a, a Google random number generator. She's going to read out a, a year and then I'm going to go searching through our archives, um, which we have on our network and then uh, find what we have and we can all take a look at it. I'll share my screen and we can take a look at what we have here in the museum. So uh, Catherine, would you give us our first year? Sure. Our first year is 1915. <laughs> Okay, let's see. So that is going to be uh, one of the museum's um, newspaper collections, 1915. So another thing that we have to remember is that, you know, January 1st or December 31st, they didn't always print right on that day. So we're gonna have to choose one that's closest to that. Um, let's see, oh, and as I say that, it looks like they printed on January 1st <laughs> for this year. <laughs> but we're just gonna go with the next closest one um, because that was just vital statistics. So we're gonna 
opened January 8th, 1915. Let's see if I can share this with everybody. Let's see if we can find it. Okay. All right. <laughs> so here we are. We can see, uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. This is the Eastern Star, which is um, basically the precursor to the Kennebunk Coast Star, which still is around. We have Friday, January 8th, uh, 1915. So it was just after the um, beginning of the new year. So as with uh, most papers nowadays, um, the, the front page is like all the dramatic stories. So it could be a local story or it could be a more national story. And then as you go into the um, pages, you can see um, kind of more and more local stories. So let's take a scroll through and see what we see. Um, some of the times the interesting things to look at are the um, advertisements as well. <laughs> so, um, you know, perhaps not a rarity for these days. This one says political ball are rolling. Republicans are talking justice born for selectmen. <laughs> and if anybody recognizes born, uh, born as a last name, like Born Street here in downtown Kennebunk, um, Mr. Born evidently is from Kennebunk. One of my favorite things, uh, like I said, is to look at the advertisements. So just like nowadays, um, I think it's funny that uh, in January, everybody is now trying to unload everything that they had. Um, on sale for Christmas. So mm -hmm. if you look at the right side, um, Bonser's bumper sale, in every sense of bumper sale, which God knows what that means, but <laughs> apparently something important. Um, bargains have been added that ensure big business for the week. So that's fun. George Bonser and Son was right here on Main Street. Um, if I'm getting my locations correct, um, it's kind of, it would, would have been right directly across from where Duffy's is in Lafayette Center now. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's um, quickly get to, ooh, um, get to the <laughs> uh, local. <laughs> yeah, that's a big one. <laughs> um, my gosh. Uh, this is local news. This giant ad kind of took up the entire um, piece of paper here, but um thought this was kind of funny. So there's local news. These are the types of things that we all make fun of nowadays where um, it basically says what people were doing. So if they came for Christmas or if they were visiting someone. So like this one, Mrs. George Bourne and children are in Portland. Um, Alma Perkins spent her two weeks vacation in Gloucester. Um, and lawyer John Smith was in town this week. So those are the kinds of things you see when you go through uh, these local papers. Uh, one thing I will say, because I'm going through this really fast, uh, the museum has a, a, um, obviously an archive. So if you ever want to explore these papers yourselves, you are more than welcome to come and take a look. <laughs> um, all right, Catherine, would you give us our next uh, year? We're going to do about four of these sure. uh, this time. Okay, let's see what we got. We got 1942. Oh, all right. 1942. Let me see. Staying if I can. in the 20th century. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. I'm going to show you what I am looking at, uh, which is this little folder. Um, and I don't have a 1942, which is sad. I'm okay. sure we actually do have some uh, newspapers, actually, um, that have to do with the 1940s. They just aren't digitized yet. So um, if anybody, that's my plug for if anyone likes to volunteer and do scanning can sign up as well and help us scan the newspaper collection. <laughs> okay, hit hit another one. Hit another one. It we got 1855. Okay. Nice. It's one right here. Yeah, I see it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I shared the screen right. Hold on. Oops. I didn't. And I keep hitting the wrong thing. Okay. Um Oh, did I share that correctly? Can you see us? It, uh, it's picture? like a photo. Okay, yeah. A photo of typing, right? Yeah. Okay. So this is uh, 1855. We're looking at the journal of a man named Andrew Walker. He was um, the town diarist between the 1850s and the 1890s. So he did almost every day he wrote something that was going on in town. So he can be depended on for an awful lot. Um, sometimes stuff that wasn't in the newspaper because this was all kind of personal ramblings of his 
or not ramblings, but um, <laughs> personal opinions of his. Yeah. So January 1st, 1855, what was going on in Kenny Bunk? He says, James M. Stone left this town this morning for Augusta, where the legislature meets on Wednesday the 3rd. He wishes to consult with his political friends before the time of meeting, as he is one of the candidates for Speaker of the House. Um, I will admit that I'm not sure if James Stone got to be Speaker of the House, but I know um, <laughs> uh, about uh, seven years later, he was in the Civil War. He was leading the 27th Maine down to Washington, so wow. had, a, had a different job. <laughs> wow, just a few years after. Yeah, exactly. All right, cool. good one. What's our next one? All right, next year is 1892. 1892. Okay, I think that's going to, gosh, I think that's going to bring us, I'm having trouble with the computer, everybody. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I Isn't think everybody. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's going to bring us back to the newspapers if I can get to that folder. Okay, actually, I'll, I'll share my screen here too, and I'm sure nobody cares, but I just want to show you um, what the museum's uh, digital archive looks like. So this is what I'm looking at, uh, this folder right here. So we have the Eastern Star for all of these years, obviously. So uh, 1892, we're gonna look for the closest um, to the either the end or the beginning of the year for this instance. There's the December 30th, so that probably gonna do, oh no, it's January 1st or, okay. We're, we're gonna go with December oh, wow. 30th, the end of the year. <laughs> the beginning or the end. <laughs> Okay, so here it is again. Eastern Star, Friday, December 30th, 1892. The, the font is a, lot <laughs> is a lot smaller on this one. Um, let's see. So like I said, the first, <clears throat> the first uh, page on here, and Catherine, if you see anything interesting, shout it out. Um, the first page is kind of more like dramatic stories. So it, again, it could be local, it could be national or somewhere somewhere in between. Let's see. I see somebody's getting in trouble, New York bank records, <laughs> that's mention of a US district attorney. So that's always exciting right at the end of the year. <laughs> There's a lot of a uh, lot of stories, it seems like this one, there isn't, <clears throat> excuse me, there isn't much about um, kind of things that have happened, but just interesting uh, personal stories, it looks like. So let's go down to the, wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so this is interesting. As we scroll down, this one, um, a little article on this restriction of immigration. Again, this is from 1892. Um, questioning, uh, shall immigration be restricted? And if so, how and, what to what ex uh, how and to what extent is one of the most important questions that will in all probability occupy the attention of the coming, coming session of Congress. So um, immigration is still a problem more than 100 years later. <laughs> Here they are uh, narrating that. That's kind of interesting. Um, so you can see, actually, if you take a look at the very bottom, you can see where uh, this was originally published. So if you look around, so this one, St. Louis uh, Globe Democrat, that one that I just read was New York Recorder. So they, um, the editors of the Eastern Star would kind of pick and choose from different national newspapers and bring that to the um, obviously local audience. So if we just quickly go down to page two, we can see what was happening. Uh, this was more national, ooh, national stories. Oh, <laughs> <We're crying>. international. <laughs> <laughs> Remarkable story concerning the Panama scandal crisis in oh. France said to be due to a blackmailer. Oh, dear. oh God. <laughs> <laughs> And then more advertisements. Advertisements. Cremation. There's Bonser Yikes. and Son again. They're still trying to sell all their stuff. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. One and then, oh, That's cool. so this, yeah. <laughs> so this one is an interesting one because um, if anybody watched our uh, Christmas lecture, we talked a lot about Christmas festivals that started in Kenny Bunk, the second half of the 19th century. Um, and it's basically talking about all the events that happened at the local churches and who was performing and what songs were sung. <laughs> so there they are, mention of that. They got the um, Boston and Maine Railroad schedule. 
anybody needed to know that. Um, here's they a got a Ooh, listing okay. of fires on the right. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> That's oh, wow. the fire record down the bottom. Oh yeah. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Extensive oh, conflagrations in different parts of the country. Wow. Just yeah. Supporting all of the fires. <laughs> the fires that happen and all the insurance loss. Kind of interesting. <laughs> Uh, over here, there's Kenny Bunk in vicinity. So literally telling you if your Dr. York's office is closed or mm -hmm. if Ralph Hatch from West Newton is visiting, <laughs> um, which is kind of fun as well. Uh, I just saw the word boomerang. So I'd like to read that one out, whatever it is. The latest name for the return postal card is the boomerang postal. It is both appropriate and suggestive. Uh -huh. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Um, so Captain Tickham, who lived on Summer Street, uh, has just received a cargo of the celebrated Upper Lehigh Coal by the schooner, wow, Avushin, now in at Kennebunk Port. And then, of course, there is mention of the ice men are putting the edge on their tools. It looks like now an early crop, Ferguson and Perkins began Tuesday filling their ice house. So whoever is interested in ice in the winter or getting ready for summer, I suppose, um, it's even better. <laughs> All right, let's go to uh, our third, is this our third year? Uh, I believe so, yes. Okay. This one, so let's do one more. That will be 1930. Don't have 1930, but I have close 1929. So we're gonna go with that one because this is a new um, this is a new person that I brought in. So this lady's name, can you see that picture? Yep. Okay. So this lady, her name was Mary Varney. She wrote uh, journals and she lived here in Kennebunk. Um, she wrote journals between 1920 and 1950. So she also, like Andrew Walker, kind of had a day-to-day, -day, um, you know, narrative of what was going on, at least in her view. Yep. Um, so let's read what was happening January 1st in 1929. Not a great year for most nope. of the country. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it was 22 degrees out, um, dull snow and rainy, which great mix. Um, cloudy all <laughs> forenoon began uh, to sun or snow a little, um, oh gosh, a little fine snow and continued all afternoon until about 6 p.m. Uh, turned to rain and rained <laughs> basically all evening. Wow, that doesn't sound great. <laughs> nope. She says, Alice and I went uh, with Nellie Davis in her car Wow, mm -hmm. um, to a 12-table bridge party. Wow. Oh, that sounds <laughs> pretty nice on New Year's Day. Uh, she goes on to say here, uh, let's see, she met up with some more people down here, like Helen Lunge, Flora Small, and Mrs. Bowden. And then they served, oh, at this party, they served oh, lobster yeah. salad, uh, olives, cheese balls, pickles, ice cream, <laughs> uh, ginger sauce, and coffee. Wow. Sounds like them quite a mix. <laughs> yes, right, exactly. <laughs> and she ends with saying 37 degrees at 7 p.m. So it warmed up a little bit. Warmed up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's our last uh, date for this session? All righty. One more. We got 1900 even. <laughs> oh. Okay. Let's see if I was lucky enough to get that one. We'll have to go back to the newspapers, which is just fine. Let me find that. Uh... Okay. Is that on there? No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Nineteen hundred. All right. So again, we're going to search for closest date um, to the beginning or end of the year. Let's see if I can actually read. <laughs> <laughs> so we got January fifth, or we have December twenty first. Oh. Let's go with um, let's go with December twenty first because they get to look back on the year of the oh, yeah. kind of first of the twentieth century. <laughs> I guess technically. Yep. Oh, I opened it wrong again. Okay. Here it is. Wow. Royal baking powder, Ooh. which I just bought the other day. So they're still in business. Everywhere. Oh, wow. Absolutely. Cure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Friday, December 21st, 1900. All right. Wow. Anxiety over a Tomcat, um, <laughs> a mystery, which was explained by a Wall Street man. 
don't know what that is, but that sounds pretty interesting. It was in a Broadway pharmacy. Uh, a reporter was waiting with others when the druggist stepped to the telephone and after getting the number he called for and uh, he said, what is that Tomcat doing? <laughs> uh, and then continued to ask, how is the spinach? So that sounds like an interesting story. Intriguing. <laughs> <laughs> There's an advertisement over here. Um, I'm betting for some sort of um, wonder pill that they were trying to sell in 1900, mm -hmm. but it says happy motherhood to lead off. And that was kind of the lead in to, to bring your eye over. And then, and as you actually, if you start looking here, there's mm -hmm. something called Dr. Dr. Pierce's favorite prescription. So right. that you can see that <laughs> a lot in these kinds of papers. Oh, there's elixir. another one, a sick child trues elixir cures. Oh, and there's someone uh, down below, F.B. Perkins, local gentleman, selling coal. So there's advertisements from all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> let's see, let's get to the, the uh, local news, um, or I guess, obviously, national news as well. Hunting season. <laughs> Close to what? midnight. Oh, hunting. hunting season. Oh, yeah. Of 19, 1900 in Maine, closed at midnight Saturday night. Last few yeah. sportsmen were out of the woods Monday. Oh. There you go. Um, the return showing that Bangor and Aristic section about 3,150 deer, 138 moose. Um, comparatively, it looks like th 300 fewer deer than the year before. Not being a hunter, I'm not sure if that's a lot or a little for, for these days. <laughs> I don't know. If somebody knows, please make a comment. Yeah. <laughs> um, we got some state news about people. Uh, oh, man was drowned. Oh, Sorry to stop on that one. Um, oh, gosh. Goodness. <laughs> fire at 3 yeah. o'clock Sunday morning. So you this can is the bad news. Reporting. Yeah, all the bad news, right? <laughs> <laughs> Gal Galladay? Galladay in, in the history of Pratt's Memorial Methodist Episcopal Church in Rockland. Oh. Uh, Vaughn's Bridge, Portland, must be widened. I'm sure that was a big thing when it was eventually widened, or if it was, I don't know. <laughs> There's something about Savannah, New York, Saturday night, a locomotive struck a carriage at a crossing. Oh. Yikes. Oh, somebody. Those don't move as fast. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, still talking about pardons. So that is oh. a current event as well. <laughs> the more things change, the more they stay the same, everyone. I think that's the yep. lesson for most that years. That is the lesson indeed. <laughs> Um, I'm just trying to scroll to the really local news. They, they got a long one for December here, I guess. That's okay. Yep. <laughs> I don't want to like go whizzing by. Arctic mosquito. Oh, wow. Yikes, they got a lot of national news. <laughs> Sorry, this, is like, this is a huge uh, tome of a newspaper. Yep. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, oh, here we go. Of course, I just flipped off of it. That was exciting. Oops. Oh, these newspapers are tricky. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Something you don't see in America anymore. Oh, wow. Okay. Finally, sorry. Kenny Bunkin vicinity. They wish a Merry Christmas. Schools closed today for the holiday. So that, oh. that was a big piece of news. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's see. So again, they kind of go one by one with all the churches that were here in town. Um, look at this in Kenny Bunkport, a Mrs. Ruth Curtis of this town celebrated her 102nd birthday a short oh, wow. time since. That's pretty long, even for now. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. The library will cl be closed on Monday night, and all books due for that evening can be returned the following library night. Huh. Wow. One extra day. <laughs> uh, and then, again, this goes back to um, the... Uh, ice house on the river. Preparations were begun Wednesday for cutting the year's supply of ice on the Muslim. Oh, wow. so still making ice. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. That's neat. Well, those were, uh, I th was that the fourth one? I think that was four or five. I actually can't. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I can't remember either. The numbers. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I'm just going to read one last one and then we'll sign off for now. Um, where in Cape Porpoise, it says a schooner Adelaide was finished loading hardwood for the provinces, she being the second foreign vessel to load here. 
So yeah. um, obviously that means uh, there were ships still coming in and out of uh, the port and shipping things. Uh, reference to the province, provinces, excuse me, means um, going up to Canada with some lumber. So that's yeah. kind of cool to see. Um, all right, everyone, we're going to take a break and we'll be back with you a little bit later. Enjoy. <laughs> 